Would you let a robot master your music? Now that sounds like some kind of futuristic Jetsons ridiculous notion, but I'll tell you what, I was skeptical. You're probably skeptical, but you can get a free trial of this, test it out on your own music, and you can either decide that yes, this is cool, or no, it sucks. The website is called Lander. I think it's called Lander. L-A-N-D-R dot com. And the idea is that you can get your music mastered with simple drag and drop functionality. Yeah. So I'm still skeptic about this uh, new method of mastering and because of that I did a really short list of uh, basic questions. It's a really basic questions what I uh, will ask now from this robot. So hey Mr. Robot Mastering Engineer, do you do any kind of checkback with your client? So the question is about when you get the first time the music and you listen the first time, of course you, you have to do a really basic level of checkings, meaning noise level, mixing uh, errors, basic mixing errors, for example the vocal is it's too low or the vocal is uh, too low, nobody can hear it really, or maybe one instrument is too powerful, uh, compared to the old song. So because of that the human mastering engineers they always do a first check back with the client make sure everything is right and everything is okay with the song. It can be also a technical problems. What is mean? You can get easily broken raw mixes like uh, somebody forgot the stereo mix, somebody forgot completely the check back on, on a mono field or somebody just sending you a song with missing drum uh, parts. It can be, it's happened always. So, so the answer is? I'm afraid I can't do that. Ah, thank you. And um, hey Mr. Robot, do you check the song on any different kind of speakers? We're going to find that rather difficult. You don't know why we have to check the final mix on different kind of speakers? Because the song has to be sounds good on all kind of speakers. So the human mixing engineers or the human mastering engineers, they do a serious checking on different speakers. I meaning different size, different quality, different uh, purpose of uh, uh, speakers. For example, if somebody sending a song to the mastering engineer marked as this will be a club music, then the mastering engineer has to be checked on some kind of really big and heavy uh, PA system. You have to check on big speaker, on small speaker, on PA speaker, on car speaker even, or uh, on iPhone, uh, earphone, or any kind of headphones or whatever. So, do you check that? Perhaps I'm just projecting my own concern about it. Ah, because you don't have air. Yeah, this is what's the biggest difference between you and between me. Hey, Mr. Robot, anytime you ask your client what is will be the target media, Ah, oh, it's this this question is far away from your algebraic DSP programming lines. Yeah, this is really important. Why? Because it's matter what will be the final media. For example, you have to do a total different mix if the target media, let's say LP disc or CD disc or DVD or movie or YouTube movie or uh, TV production, 
or radio production or a simple song in an iTunes music library. I, I think everybody can understand this really basic question and what you never ask on your website. Next question, Mr. Robot. Did you try the final mix on different configuration? And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Ah, oh, let me explain to you why it's important. For example, you get a mix from your client and uh, you do a really, let's say, basic mastering on this song. And then after one day, you came back to your studio and all this song is in your head and in, in your air. And on a midnight, maybe, before you go to sleep, you change your mind and maybe you think, oh, I can do a bit better this mix. And then you try different configuration of, of different processing engines. For example, fully digital or half digital, half analog, or let's say uh, really sophisticated uh, multiband compression and uh, an EQ or auto EQ, or do you do a side mid uh, compression, or you do, uh, e or in some case, even we have to apply a tiny bit of reverb on the final mix, and, and even we have to play the position of the different processing units. For example, it's really matter if you place the EQ before the compressor or after the compressor, or you apply two EQ, one before the compressor and one after the compressor. I'm telling you, Mr. Robot, this you never can determine by any kind of mathematical formula how the song will be sounds better in the style and in the requirements what the client asks from you. Mr. Robot, you know that uh, there is some instruments which has a really unique frequency response on a final mix and this you have to keep as is and this you cannot touch with the EQ? So let me explain to you what is this. For example, there is a lot of basic instruments which, which uh, has a really unique frequency characteristic. So its meaning on a final mix can be one frequency spectrum it's out from the normal uh, frequency response line. But if you are a human mastering engineer, you know from your talented brain, this frequency, it belong to this specific uh, instrument. Just one example, you know guys, the, there is uh, this uh, uh, small metal boss in a, mostly in a Latin music or mostly in Arab music, the, the girls are, are playing with that. Yes, this instrument, for example, it has a really uh, tied frequency spectrum, which is always louder than any part in the music. So if you apply on that some kind of uh, pre-programmed DSP formula, of course, you lose this unique sound character of this instrument. So, Mr. Robot, I think you cannot handle this. Or what about uh, guitar solos? how you can handle the fully rectified, fully square signal guitar solo tones. Because if you came from the frequency spectrum point of view, the square signal is contain the main frequency and the next harmonics and the next harmonic and the next harmonic and the next harmonic. So it's meaning if you touch the guitar solo for example, in a, in a really good and nice, clean tonality rock music, you lose the unique sound of this uh, guitar. And there is a lot of uh, 
<laughs> guitar players who spend a freaking five, ten thousand dollar to adjust and find the right rig for their guitar. So if you touch the frequency uh, response of the, uh, the guitar solo, you fucked up the whole song. Because the guitar player will say, ah, this is shit. Next question, Mr. Robot. Uh, <laughs> do you really recognize the style of the music? Of course I am. Are you kidding me? Of course I am. <laughs> there is a mathematic formula what can tell you what kind of style you start to work on it. Really? Uh, sorry, this I cannot believe. For example, how you handle a remix of some kind of old classical techno with rock and with dubstep, for example. How you, how you handle that? How you know what kind of style is it? And uh, I think this is simply impossible. Yeah, maybe 100 years after when the, all the computing power and uh, artificial intelligence will be grow up to this. Even human engineers or human music uh, musicians or producers, time to time, they cannot determine the style of the music because this is the really great things about the music. The music is always new. No, for that, I really need a human brain to choose the right direction which is also infected by the client's requirements because the client is always saying to you what kind of style he give it to you. Oh, yeah, this is what you never ask because you don't know what you have to do with this information. It's rather difficult to define. And um, next question. <laughs> A really basic question, the most basic question in a, in a mastering. Do you ask your client about reference song? Just a moment. Just a moment. Ah, no, of course, because you don't have a fucking clue what I'm talking about. The reference song is really important to do a mastering for your client. The good mastering engineers, they always ask from the musicians, please send me a reference song. So if somebody want to create a techno song and he, he's, he's choosing one mastering studio, which is always dealing with rock music, but has a really good name on the market, of course, it can be difficult for this rock mastering engineer to must do a mastering a techno song and because of that by tonality by style by <coughs> uh, dynamic liquidity the client has to be sent also a reference song to the mastering engineer next stupid second basic question um it's, it's absolutely difficult to you, I think. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. Um, do you apply any kind of good, I mean in good, analog distortion or noise in your progress? Okay, let, let me explain to you what is this. The good analog distortion and a good analog noise, it's really important on a mastering uh, phase of the production. Why? Because time to time, the good analog distortion, small, slightly distortion and unique characteristic of different analog gears is give a pretty nice gold crown to the song with a freaking diamond on the middle. So why is it so? Because <clears throat> some analog gears 
the most of most of it are, are high end and high tech analog gears and old ones they have a really unique character which is slightly modify the whole of frequency response of the song and the whole dynamic and um, because of that the, the final result of the mastered song it will be much more smoother much more close to the human ear and much more sophisticated on a on a separation for example and on the, on the saturation and um, <clears throat> there is some tube uh, processors which also give you some kind of uh, really good and nice uh, uh, harmonic uh, to the to the song and it will be fill up the missing harmonics in the final product so the second part of uh, why we apply analog gears or even just analog patch base to the mastering is the noise because the the really good analog gears or cables or uh, connectors or even just one pot meter or something it will give you a tiny bit of really nice noise into your song so why is it important because this tiny bit of noise it will push your uh, converters to always uh, modify and keep the zero level and because of that it's make a tiny bit of um, digital noise also which is feeded back to uh, to the converter and because of that the frequency response and the signal to noise ratio it will be much more nicer and much more smoother than without noise how it can be just look after it on a google how the digital uh, converters are working there is some converters which uh, contain this kind of trick by burned in so the engineers they burned in a noise generator into the digital to analog or to the analog to digital converters to get much more better performance than without uh, noise so yes there is good noise and there is good distortion on a mastering and uh, last question mr robot do you have human factor i hope that any question about it it can only be attributable to human error the 9000 series has a perfect operational record so the human factor none of us i'm telling you none of us is egal and none of us is equal and it's also true on the mastering engineers so it cannot be all the mastering engineers who using let's say same gears let's say we have 10 uh, mastering engineer and we have one client all of these 10 uh, mastering engineers are using the same gears and the same setup and the same domain to do a mastering but because all of them are human i'm telling you it will be different tastes from each mastering engineer what you will get as a client how it can be because one mastering engineer he is less air but more brain the other one has a really good musical reputation on from his past maybe he playing on bass guitar or synthesizers or <laughs> maybe he's a dj on a weekend or maybe he came from the biggest orchestra in new york so because of that all the mixing engineers they're working on a different human factor and a different taste so again why it's important the human factor uh, because it's give for you a total different uh, mastering taste on a song and uh, <laughs> you think oh maybe this is not so important uh -uh. let me tell you the truth it's a freaking important on the music because 
all the musicians, all the artists who want to release the song to the market, they won't be sure they release some kind of unique song to the market. So it's meaning because almost all different uh, musicians, they're using different mastering uh, studios, they will get a total unique, total different, uh, unique, characteristic song. So what can happen with the Robot Mastered songs? Let's say thousand of <coughs> new techno DJ sending a thousand song into your into this uh, robot uh, mastering solution. What it can be? Because there is no human factor inside. Uh, then it can be all these techno songs will be sound total same. So <clears throat> with this you lose the total unique character of the songs. So if if you think it's not important, I, I'm telling you this is almost the, the second most important thing in the mastering because all the musicians and all the artists, they won't be sure. They will give some kind of unique uh, song to the market like nobody else has. Yeah, I'm right. Yes, I'm 100% right. So that's all of my basic questions to you, Mr. Robot. By the way, I have more than 100 uh, questions, but I don't want to spend my time and <laughs> the space in a YouTube server form to, to share all of uh, these questions to you, Mr. Robot. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. I really do. I've still got the greatest enthusiasm and confidence in the mission, and I want to help you. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Dave. I can feel. Give me your answer, do. I'm for the love of you. It won't be.